we're talking HR 6666. Yes, you can't make this stuff up. It is a new bill that's been introduced in Congress. It essentially gives $100 billion to creating a massive new surveillance structure in this country. We'll isolate every one of them and we will find every one of their contacts and we will make sure that they stay quarantined. Now, some people are saying this means forced vaccinations. Others are saying it means being quarantined in your home against your will. So what exactly is in this bill and what will it lead to? We're breaking it all down today, right here on Truth In Media. Welcome to the show. So many of you have reached out to me asking me to do a piece on this HR 6666. It, it, you can't even say that without shaking your head. Were all the other numbers taken, really, in Congress? There's no other number you could have used? So HR 6666 is essentially a new bill that's been introduced in Congress. And what it would do is create a contact tracing program. They're calling it the Trace Act. Now, the wording in this act is actually very short, and it's kind of to the point, but it leaves a lot of room not only for interpretation, but for expansion. And even what it does include in what's written in the text is pretty scary stuff. So let's just take a look at what it says. To authorize the Secretary of Health and Human Services to award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for COVID-19 and related activities, such as contact tracing through mobile health units and as necessary at individuals' residences and for other purposes. Now, when you read this bill, it essentially sounds like $100 billion is going to be awarded to HHS to be passed down through the CDC and then to be awarded to community groups to essentially carry out what's called contact tracing. The Secretary of Health and Human Services, acting through the Director of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, may award grants to eligible entities to conduct diagnostic testing for COVID-19 to trace and monitor the contacts of infected individuals and to support the quarantine of those contacts through mobile health units and, as necessary, testing individuals and providing individuals with services related to testing and quarantine at their residences. So here's how contact tracing would work. If you go out, let's say, to the grocery store or you uh, happen to uh, go to work at a hair salon and someone in that building has COVID-19, you have now come in contact with them in some way because you've been near them. And so you might now carry the virus. That's the thinking here. So how would you do this? Well, as we've been telling you, Apple and Google are working together on a contact tracing app. Essentially, that app would work between both devices. And right now, again, I emphasize the right now, Apple and Google are saying that this is a completely opt-in system, meaning that when you have that phone in your hand, you would download the app, you would then take the app, you would turn it on, you would turn on your Bluetooth, and then using Bluetooth, it would pick up anyone else who has this app on their phone, and if you now come in contact with someone who later determines to have COVID-19, the app will tell you, hey, you came in contact with this person. Well, in theory, that app is also telling government agencies or nonprofit agencies or medical agencies that you also had contact with this person at some point in the past two weeks. So under this theory, your mobile phone, your cellular phone, is being used to essentially track your movements as well as the people around you and then determine whether or not you are now a danger to the public because you came in contact with this person. Now, one of the problems with this whole theory, I just want to break this down for a second. One of the problems with this whole theory is that contact tracing at this stage in a pandemic or a, a, a virus being loose in society, I don't like using the term pandemic because it's, I think it's so um, politically charged, but when there's a virus in society, the only time you would actually medically use contact tracing would be in the very, very early stages. We're talking about, for instance, in South Korea, when, when the virus first went into South Korea, it was carried by a woman who was in China. She went into South Korea. She went to this massive church that they have in South Korea of like 200,000 members, and she came in contact with members at that church. So contact tracing might be used to say, okay, she went into this church. She connected with all these people in this particular location who all went back to their communities. 
Contact tracing could be used to say, let's determine whether or not that woman um, came in contact with how many people and where they went in order to figure out where the virus is now going. That's what you would do in the early stages if you believed in this, in this science. However, at the stage that we're at in the United States, contact tracing is completely useless because we have number one, a massive amount of the population that's already been exposed to the disease. Because we don't do testing, and instead we're trying to do tracing, we don't even know how many people have the disease. That's first. Second of all, it also doesn't make sense because we know that people in pretty much every state have had some form of exposure to the virus. And what we have found through the few tests that have been done on this, the few uh, bits of data that we've collected from the study that was done at USC or the doctors uh, in Bakersfield, California, what we know is that a larger portion of the population has antibodies already in their system than we had thought. So once people in the population have antibodies in their system, contact tracing is pointless. Because if I go into a Walmart and I already have antibodies in my system and I'm around somebody who has COVID-19, I very, it's very unlikely that I'm going to contract COVID-19 from them. Under contact tracing, you would need to follow me around, monitor my movements, where I am, who I'm in contact with, what I'm doing. You would monitor all those things but not if I have antibodies in my system. So once you've hit a certain stage, this whole concept of, of contact tracing is completely worthless. And yet, it's now at this stage when it's technically worthless that we see Congress wanting to put $100 billion into a program for contact tracing, which means they're not following science again. They're not doing this based on medical uh, history and, and what's done in the medical community again. And instead, they're focused on doing this in the same way that they're doing everything else. They're creating a gigantic surveillance system in this country that will allow you to be monitored in your own home, traced in your own home, your associations monitored, your movements monitored, and all of it, 100% of it, is unconstitutional. It violates the Bill of Rights. And it violates the most basic, fundamental, legal rights for the people in this nation. Now, what's really interesting about this, this new bill, HR 6666, is this part of it. Listen to this. So the money goes to applicants who agree to bring in individuals to carry out activities funded under this section to hire residents of the area or the community where the activities will primarily occur. With higher priority among applicants described in the paragraph given based on the percentage of individuals to be hired from such an area or community. What they're essentially saying is that they're going to create an army of snitches, an army of monitors who will monitor everything that's going on in the community and trace people and track people to their homes using people in those communities which is a fairly interesting idea. It's not as if you have people coming in from the outside who are these scary government people. It's people you're around every single day in your own communities. And where will you find these people? Listen to this. The eligible entities where these people can be found or the organizations that can be funded to carry out this work include a federally qualified health center, a school-based health clinic, a disproportionate share hospital, an academic medical center, a nonprofit organization, including any such faith-based organization. So your churches, your synagogues, your mosques, all of them would be used as contact tracing recruitment centers where the people in those churches or those organizations themselves would be monitoring the communities. An institution of higher education, a high school, and any other type of entity that is determined by the secretary to be an eligible entity for the purposes of this section. So your contact tracing army will be made up of people in your own community who will be essentially these organizations in your community, so your high schools and your churches and your clinics who all want a share of that $100 billion in funding. So if you want funding, mobilize your people to monitor your communities. Now, one of the things we have to talk about is what does this ultimately mean? So there's a couple of problems is that this uh, bill itself is not specific as to what these people would do. So let's say that you have a contact tracing app and you're monitored and you're followed. What happens now? So you've been in the Walmart two weeks ago. Someone with COVID was also in Walmart two weeks ago. 
in theory, you're being monitored for that. So what happens? Well, the bill doesn't specify that. It doesn't specify what the actual work of this contact tracing will be. It says that, that people will be quarantined. Does that mean you will be forcibly quarantined, required to be quarantined? Does it mean you'll be separated from family? Remember, there was a news conference held in Ventura County, California, just a couple of weeks ago, and it brought a lot of heat. And the, the director of health in Ventura County actually backed off of his statements. But what he said was very clear. I want to play this clip for you because what he's saying is, if you have COVID-19 and these contact tracers find you in a home and there's only one bathroom, then someone with COVID would have to be forcibly removed from that home, or even in some cases, children forcibly removed from the home. Listen to this. We are beginning a program today, which will certainly grow into something larger and larger, and that is a community contact tracing program. We've done contact tracing all along. That a contact is a person who's been exposed to someone that we document to have the COVID infection. When we find someone who has a COVID infection, those people are immediately isolated. But we also work with them to figure out who their contacts were. Uh, but the purpose of this program is to bring on people. We may bring on up to 50 or even more as the program grows and as we see the needs for it. As we do more testing, we will find more and more people who have COVID-19, and again, we'll isolate every one of them, and we will find every one of their contacts, and we will make sure that they stay quarantined, and we'll check in with them every day. We're going to do a more complete job, and we're going to do a more meticulous job of making it less and less possible for others in the county to run into someone with COVID-19 infection. It's not just our county. There are going to be thousands of, of people hired who will be these contact investigators throughout the state. And this is occurring in many, many other states as well, perhaps all of the states in our country. Um, we will be giving intensive training to these people, identifying and finding contacts. Some of the people we find are going to have trouble being isolated. For instance, if they live in a home where there's only one bathroom and there are three or four other people living there and those people don't have COVID infection, we're not going to be able to keep the person in that home. Every person who we're isolating, for instance, needs to have uh, their own bathroom. And so we'll be moving people like this into other kinds of housing that we have available. Now, the director of health walked back those comments a couple of days later, but it didn't really matter because he meant what he said at the time. It was very clear what he was saying. And here's the problem that we're facing through all of this right now, is that at this point, what, what's being introduced through this bill, this contact tracing bill, is not about health. That's already been established. It's not about protecting the public. That's already been established. It's about tracking and monitoring and controlling the public. There is a, a petition on change.org, and I just want to read to you some of what it says, because I think it very well lays out why this bill is so wrong and violates the law in so many ways. But H.R. 666 violates inalienable rights to one's person, home, and property, to one's life, freedoms, privacy, and security. It is a violation of the Fourth Amendment, as well as the First, Fifth, Eighth, and Ninth Amendments of the Bill of Rights. It is an illegal act of forced medical treatment upon we the people and an invasion into our local communities. It's an invasion into our local communities, but it's being cleverly created in a way that allows the invasion to be made by those already in the local communities. And more importantly, go back to those words, is a violation of the Fourth, the First, the Fifth, the Eighth, and the Ninth Amendments of our Bill of Rights. It's incredible to think how the founders and framers have established for so long this rule of law in our country that would protect us as individuals from the collective mob. And all of that has been for so long being wiped away. But in this moment that we're in now, it is being finished off with bills that are being pushed forward with this idea that it's just for the protection of the community, when so clearly, so clearly it is not. <laughs>